in three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. Before we begin this podcast, I'd like to apologize for if I sound really stuffy. Allergies got me. <laughs> okay. It's pretty intense. It's that. Uh, what is it? Hay fever? What is it? I don't know. What is it? Hay fever? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. No. Was... Maybe it's hay fever. I don't know. Is, is that like a thing? Is it like no hay fever a thing? I don't even know what that is. All right, so uh, this is your Socratic dialogue where we talk about one cool thing that we thought from the week. No, that was no, no, no that was my old intro. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is just Socratic dialogue. We should talk about. We should talk. It's the it's the allergies. <laughs> okay. Get me. I'm like so confused. Oh, I see. I see, I see. I'm in a delirium right now, but uh, we're pulling through, pulling okay. through to give you a podcast. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about one of the things that is near and dear to me and Vish's heart. Okay. And many of our friends, it's gaming. Oh, oh yeah, that's very true. So, um, basically, we we came up around the time of when gaming. Like, I guess no. Technically, we didn't. We weren't born when the first video game came out, which was like Atari and stuff. Yeah. Right. But like, we were we were in the apex of our like when gaming was like getting huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with the internet and stuff, right? right? Like it started to like, it started to like really um, come into its own, mm-hmm. and like we all, we all became like super obsessed. That's when like PlayStation came out with PlayStation and like, Nintendo. like uh, what would you call those? Consoles? Like Which yeah, cons- They're consoles, but like the originals were consoles too. Like Atari was a console, but it's like they're like game changers. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like that's when the revolution happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, one could say, like, oh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo was a revolution. Right. But, like, when you went from, like, compact discs, to, no, no, compact discs, RCDs, when you went from, like, those, like, um, packets. Cartridges? Cartridges, thank you. Yeah. From cartridges to um, CDs, that's when, like, mm-hmm. the game completely changed. Because, like, you were able to hold way more data. Yeah. I should really buy that book, Console Wars. I, I saw it a long time ago. I should read it. But uh, it's basically about like I think it's Sega, like how right, how right. like it changed the game. Was, was Sega that's the one that started that? Like they had a CDs. They had Sega Sega Dreamcast. Yeah. Sega Genesis. Yeah. No, I think it was PlayStation was the first one. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty. Like, sure. There was something important with what Sega did too that may have changed it, but it just wouldn't. Um... Could have been like a business deal kind of thing. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. But anyways, so yeah, we we were there in the prime when like. Uh, video games came out through CDs and then like everything exploded from there, right? Yeah. But it was funny because like I – it's funny because like you have this different mentality when you grow up with video games and like computers mm. and stuff yeah. that you just don't have, I would say, now. Because cause now you're kind of like just born into it, so you just kind of get how it works. Yeah. I mean now it's everywhere, right? Like now before you had to – Buy a console or a PC, right? Make a PC or something before. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. But now it's like you know everyone has a smartphone, and on that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Whereas, like, when you're when you're like going through the phase of like, how does this thing work? There are so many yeah. difficulties right. that you have to like go through. Like, I remember I had a computer, right? Yeah. But I didn't have a console. Okay. So like, okay. I really like the Spawn game. We went to, like, the stores, and, like, we, we'd rent things, because, like, I, I did have, like, Sega, mm. like, the old Sega with the cartridges, yeah. but, like, I didn't have, like, PlayStation with the CDs, or, like, Dreamcast with CDs, right. and, like, we went to the rental store, and I saw the Spawn game, and I was like, hey, mom, like, can you get me this game, mm-hmm. right? And I think she, like, bought it for me, or she rented it for me. I think she might have bought it for me, and, like... It wouldn't work on my computer, but I couldn't understand. It was Why? like CD. Yeah, I, was like, I remember CD CD. that. I remember those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that that started to you started to learn like, oh no, different code works for different things. Or you're just not you don't have um, the gra- graphics card that you need. Like no, that no, was it was a PlayStation CD oh, or like a Sega Dreamcast. Oh, you CD. oh you bought like something that was okay, okay, okay for a console. Oh, okay, okay. See what I'm saying? And that's when you had to learn like, oh no, coding works differently. Yeah. You know, for me, as a kid, I was like, okay, CD is a CD, right? Isn't it going to work? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and then you start to realize, like, oh, no, other things. And, like, that's when, like, things like burning discs got really important, like like uh, Dragon Center. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd buy, like, you'd, like, get your PlayStation modded. 
Oh, then, right, right. And then you just, like, instead of Which paying, like... It's illegal, but... It's illegal. Allegedly, this happened. Well, I mean, you could do anything with it, but it's just, it's to get the games that was illegal for free. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, like... I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just modding it. doesn't mean that... But anyway, so, like, yeah. I remember, like... And then, like, this is when the pirate eras came, when, like, you get the PlayStation and you're, like... Um, <laughs> I can mod it, and then I'll just get, like, games for, like, $10 instead of, like, $80. Right. You know? And then you can get, like, Japanese games, too. Yeah. Like, that. those were those are the times. Those were, like, the epic periods of, like, gaming, mm. like, where pirates were just, like, everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But, like, I think it's interesting to see now the evolution of gaming and, like, one of the first real games that we ever played online was StarCraft. Okay, which is a played, computer yeah, game. I didn't, I didn't... I didn't play like I got into games quite late in some way, but like yeah. I, I like I was around people that were playing. Yeah. Well, you did have like computer games. You were like into your like. I wasn't. Games. Yeah, I was the only one that was in, in that had the PC games first. <laughs> like, and then you guys are all on console, and, and then I so saw like the la- the la- lack, or like I saw the benefits of console, and uh, eventually ended up getting one. Like, but like, now what I see now is the PC coming back. Really? Why? Yeah, I mean the, the the money's still in consoles because you can get more new people into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you once you become hardcore gamer, you end up wanting to play on PC. Yeah, true. Actually, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, because like you. So that was one of the things I was gonna say. Like, mm-hmm. even though I had PlayStation and like, I always got like the systems first. Like, right. I like I don't. It was just like a thing. I guess like it started with my like family because my uncle was really into like game boy games and then my dad just like showed up with a sega one day and like they'd always buy the newest console for Mm -hmm. me Mm -hmm. just one of them though you'd have to choose either playstation or xbox you know what i mean like couldn't Uh, get both uh, that was the worst because it's like 500 bucks right like for a console (laughs) yeah like almost a grand it's crazy oh yeah yeah it was expensive then yeah and that doesn't even include like the peripherals like a controller right right right. you know so like it was always like just buy one so you always had to make that big decision of like mm. all right am i but then in in high school it was like it was just interesting because like xbox was always seen as like the the caucasian system whereas like uh playstation mm-hmm. was the asian system right yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and i always bought the xbox because like you know our old friends were into like uh like oh, what, was, what right. was the game like football you know halo mm-hmm. like but for me like halo was like seminal like that was like the greatest online game ever right right it like paved the way for all this stuff like we're playing right now call of duty and like you know like even biohazard right now mm, it's bioshock like, Bi- bioshock yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so like yeah so i'm like not sad that i got the xbox but like i did miss out on like a lot of role-playing games right which like i'm obsessed with now mm. you know as opposed to like first person shooters because it's like you play the match and you're kind of over you know what I mean? right 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 but simultaneously like going back to like the first online game we ever played was like starcraft and like those were match driven you know right. and, and the game's still going right now like there's still they still have like starcraft um tournaments stuff like that oh yeah 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 so like like now um the like Oh, yeah, quick, quick pause, quick okay. pause. I totally, I totally went off track there. Um, sorry, I was going to say that even though I got PlayStation, I noticed that your graphics were better on Midtown Madness, and that's where I started to be like, oh. Oh, really? Think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. like Midtown Madness had way, like we were still at Polygons for PlayStation. Oh, think right, about Final right, Fantasy VII, right, right? right? Polygons. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, then yeah. like yours is like realistic um, cars. It was like, whoa, this is new. Oh, interesting. I, yeah. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention and to that. That's, okay. But the only thing that drew me back was I was like, okay, first of all, like the PC's clunky, and also the controller. It's like, I don't want to use a keyboard. Right. You know, but like now, like, yeah. all the top gamers use keyboards. Yeah, I mean, now, uh, yeah, I mean, if you go into esports, it's like, it's all about. Actually, wait, wait, hold on. Counter Strike was actually before. There's Quake, Counter Strike that led oh, the way right. for Halo. Yeah, quite. What was he? there was another one that um, Unreal Tournament. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was like really, really fast paced. I could not. I love that game actually. Yeah. I could not uh, like keep up with that one. <laughs> I think it was. I don't I know. Think it was the creators of Quake. 
Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the same engine. Okay, okay. Quake was so fast, too. Oh, my God. That's, like, nuts. It's back. Like, Quake... Uh, Quake is back. Is it Quake? Yeah. Like, something is that was, like, big in the day now is, is Doom, Doom, Doom. Doom, yeah, Doom. Doom that's is classic, back. though. Doom is back. Oh, really? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had it, like, there was a couple years ago, there was a new game. It was really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Like a new version, or, like, yeah. everyone's yeah, for the new the console. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That's cool. But, yeah. So, like... It was interesting that we... Sorry, you were going to say something? No, I'm just saying, like, now... now like, these games are going to work. Like, E... E3? Yeah, no, E3, no. Esports, sorry. Yeah, that's that's the fascinating so that's, thing. So, yeah. Like, you have, like... Like, in, in mm-hmm. South Korea, like, if you watch that Vice... That, like, web Vice documentary, and then they show you, like, how esports is, like, taking over. They took yeah. over, like, a soccer stadium. Yeah. And then they just converted to an esports stadium. That was awesome. Mm. You know, like the prevalence of like video games. It's like, this is really where we're going. Yeah. Oh yeah. My my cousin, um, who lived in the Philippines for a long time, he mm-hmm. he would say that like, um, these rich hotel owners, yeah, they would they would um, they would sponsor a team, and then you would live in the hotel, and then you would like you and your team would like become really good at like uh league of legends or something yeah or like starcraft is another one and then they would send you on like starcraft tourneys yeah and then your team would verse other teams but like that was just something unheard of in the west you know but it was like yeah it did start in it did start in asia these um uh the esports stuff but uh but uh, i think that was out of necessity though because like nobody could afford a console down there or a computer and then internet was a big thing whereas like here we could yeah. save up buy a you know computer buy a uh like high speed internet so like for mm-hmm. us it was a lot is a lot more individualistic whereas there it's like the prevalence of um gaming hubs yeah like those internet cafes yeah. are, are huge like you my cousin in the philippines he like owned one he owns one still actually i think oh okay yeah like um like a little it's just computers and then like you just pay for your time and then even in our area because like a lot of foreigners are coming Mm. now like it's interesting where we live because it's like such a hub for like asian people to come especially south koreans Mm -hmm. and like all of the new spaces that are being built in our area are like esports places it was weird really yeah yeah like the gaming oh here yeah yeah Yeah, yeah, only here yeah like i haven't really seen it everywhere but like in this one pocket of where we live it's like there's There's, like three or four of them right right well these these are very up in succession yeah we're like we're like in a mini korea place right so like in korea there's a ton of these kinds of places totally yeah right so i i can see the use for that like or the need for that here uh but uh, what I was trying to get to was like just like, like the, how big esports has gotten. Right. Okay. Right. Like it started kind of small, right? Uh huh. And then, um, now like the viewership wise, it. I guess it started in twenty twelve or something like a small amount of viewership. Now it's encroaching on like it's beating, well not yet beating NFL. No, Final, like, what? like, like, you know, like, it's that big. So, like, in, in, yeah. So, by this year or the, by next year, they will be, uh, they're ahead of all of U.S. baseball, hockey, um, all these things. But and then even in soccer and stuff like that. It just, uh, I think it, for American numbers, right? But like, uh, NFL is the biggest one right now, still, maybe for another two years. Wow. And then they will take over. Um, but that's that's like aggregate NFL numbers well. from the world, right? Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. that makes sense because Asia's yeah. got a bigger population than the West. Yeah, but now like they're making like uh, the same uh, arenas where you watch basketball. They're making them. Uh, oh really? Wow. Esports in in America. Yeah. In America. Yeah. Oh wow. In America. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting that like where we're going. It's almost like those. Those shows, like, what was that robot one where, like, um, Hugh Jackman was in it? A robot one? Yeah, he had, like, his, like, friend that he was, like... It was almost like, uh... Oh, what was it called? That, it was, like, that show... Metabots. It was, like, Metabots. Okay. Remember that one where, he, like, he pieced together his robot and then, like, he'd yeah. use it to fight and they just fight in the ring? Um... 
I think so. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like, yes, 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 yeah, yes, right. yes, yes, yeah. And then he would, like, train and stuff. That's kind of, like, where we're headed now. Like, you actually, like, mm. the, the shows of, like, Metabots were, like, you would build your own and then, like, you'd fight. I remember they tried doing that, like, Robot Warriors or something like that yeah, on the Comedy yeah. Network. Mm-hmm. But, like, it never panned out. But, like, this is kind of really what we're doing now. We're having, like, these eSports things and, like, and, like, obviously you still have, like, your, your like, traditionals, like, your football, basketball, you know, MMA is really big, but like it's it's cool to see esports making a resurgence. I feel like esports is more um, because of its like nerdy outcast nature. It's more accepting. Yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. see more like weirdos at it for mm-hmm, sure, mm-hmm. but you're not gonna be see like rude people at it. Right. You know, like when we went to Comic Con, it was it'll probably be like that feel. Yeah, I, th- I think it is. It is. Um, it's like. They're, they're saying here by 2020, 250 million people around the world will be watching live and online. Wow. And 11 billion hours of esports will be watched. Wow. Globally. Uh, Is that all on Twitch or where are they going to play that? Uh, it could be Twitch, YouTube. Um, yeah, things like that. Any, there's, diff- there's, there's more than Twitch now out there, right? Like Mixer. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is Microsoft's one. But you, you know what? I, I feel like it's like flux and flow, man. Like how people are like freaking about like, oh no, people are just going to spend more time inside. I think we're going to hit a point where we're like, no, we need to go back outside. And then it's going to switch back to like, let's take a pause on video games. And then then people are like, oh, we're spending too much time outside. Let's go back indoors. Like this new game came out. It's just like a constant like wave motion, you know, like a sine wave in mathematics, like okay. up and down. Right. You know, and like, I don't, that's why I don't really get caught up in like, is it bad or is it good? It's just like, we were in that transitional pay phase and then like, it'll a hundred percent transition back. Like when people are just like super unhealthy and like whatever. And then like, okay, we'll go back outside, you know? And then like, oh, it's kind of boring outside. There's this new console. All right, cool. Let's jump back inside. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I don't, I don't fear the change. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I just think it's like where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right, as you're saying. Yeah, no. So it'll it'll take over ten percent of U.S. sports viewing. By That's still pretty 2020. small. By 2020, though, I mean, in, in a field that the no like everybody views, like it's still not normal. Like it's right, right, in, right. in the general public, but like it's right. to be ten percent is huge. It that'll be an interesting world to live in, like just to see like people with like. Esports jerseys on. Mm-hmm. That'd be sick, bro. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like, whoa. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then, and then it all started from like things like StarCraft. We we will have been a lot. It's it's like interesting that like the future generation will mm-hmm. have been born and they'll be like, oh, esports is a thing. But like, we literally grew up in the time when it's like we got to watch esports become a thing. Right, right. No, no, yeah. Like I mean, StarCraft. It's literally you're just yeah. watching us play StarCraft. Which we used to do. We and then, used to do that. Though. Yeah, we. Yeah. You know. I mean, it, it's. It's interesting how huge it is. Like, there's you people. There's actually like fan fandom and stuff, right? That happens. Like, you get to know the players. I, I <laughs> I'm still not even into that. Like, I watch because I it it's, you know, you're you seeing like how professionals play. Like, so it became huge a couple years ago. Also, was because of Overwatch. Remember right. I used to play yeah, Overwatch yeah, yeah. a ton, and then, then esports also like that. Like, it depends. If certain games added on more and more popularity to it. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and then uh, now with like now there's there's Fortnite, uh, like there's so many different games that you can go specify in, and that becomes huge. And it, I mean, Counter Strike, it's still it's still there, right? People are still playing that in in the esports game. So it's like even the old ones are you know coming back. Halo, they have those tournaments too. So there's so many different kinds, so many different teams out there, and you're facing you know people from around the world. So like who it's it's interesting to see for sure and yeah. it's interesting that like people actually derived a career off of these things you know like um we'd watch like ghost robo and yeah. nation um i've never watched kaz but i heard he's like the number one uh um, no i never never watched him either. yeah yeah so but it's interesting like we actually know who these people are and, right like they're i i don't feel like i i feel like it's like niches Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like these pockets. Like one thing that they said in like high tech marketing was like the internet will start to provide like different marketplaces for different people, and that's mm-hmm. what like that's what the beauty of the internet is. Like I don't think we're gonna lose our like 
basketball fans or like rock climbing no, fans. No, 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 like, no. You know, it's just like, you no, know, you're going to have another avenue from which to like consume I mean, this, media. This, yeah, exactly. And this is just all good for um, merchandising and commerce in general. Commerce yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. It's, it's interesting too, like with these, like it's, it's funny, like thinking about it now mm-hmm. with like um, these like um, sports, uh, what do you call this? Like these sports like idols yeah, being like esports idols, like, mm-hmm. like ammunition, ghost robo. And then we even saw a little bit of that, like um, as we were going up, like um, little side, interesting tidbit, uh, rest in peace, he's poop. But like, him being so good at, oh, yeah like our, our friend that passed away yeah. and like it's coincidentally where i took the name off of out of you know i always thought that name was dope mm-hmm. but like him him being so good at the game was like dude you were like our first esports idol right like, remember he used to take on like all everyone versus me yeah and he would he kill was, all of us yeah, he would, and he we're was, like what the hell <laughs> and then we're like, yo, what did you set your freaking sensitivity to? And he's like, maximum. And you're like, how are you playing at maximum? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's things like that. And like, and yeah. seeing how like, like this, like not to get into his life, but like mm-hmm. if things had turned in a different way or he like waited just a little bit longer, it was like, it would have, he would have had a whole avenue from which to like yeah. pursue a career off of. Yeah. You know, and like, it's interesting to see that parallel, Mm -hmm. you know, whereas like people would be like, oh, you're just wasting your life playing video games. It's like, (laughs) no, this is actually a viable career now. Right. But again, to keep everything into perspective, it's just like basketball. It's like, it's like if you're playing basketball outside all the time, it's like you're wasting your life on basketball. No, it's a viable career. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Now you're like a fighter. It's like you're wasting your life on mm. martial arts. No, it's a viable career. It's like no video games are just a viable career now. The one percent of you are going to make it to the elite of elite, but it is a new avenue from which to approach. Yeah, you know, and I oh, find yeah. that really interesting. Yeah. Uh, like uh, I got these numbers for um, revenue numbers total for 2019. Were they expecting? Uh, 1.1 billion. In wow. Revenue. Just from that alone, mm-hmm. esports. Oh, uh, aggregately worldwide. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's like I mean, we're talking trillions and trillions of dollars, and but we're talking about a thing things. that only was here like ten years ago. Totally. Oh, yeah. less okay. than that. Less I'll, than I'll that. Admit, yeah, you're right. You're less right. Less than that. It's still a small drop in the ocean, but like, it's it's interesting oh, yeah. to see the shifting change. But again, it's sort of like the way we're looking at esports is kind of like the way that people were looking at. UFC back in the day mm-hmm. when it was 93 and the first UFC came out and they're like oh, I don't know if this is actually going to hit and now it's yeah. like becoming this global phenomenon it's yeah. just like esports so they're expecting it's, uh, it's about 26% year over year increase 26% yeah each year yeah on top of what it was like that's the growth rate wow that's crazy yeah so that's what I'm saying like it's for something that's very recent right so I, like um a lot of them is coming from Asia, right? Most of them. It makes sense, yeah. Totally. Which is, uh, yeah, totally makes sense. Uh, but it is growing here too in in North America, and other parts. Like it, it's uh, it's interesting to watch. I gotta say, we're like in a we're in such like a digital revolution now that it's like we don't even know where it's all gonna go. It's it's like um it's like the Skrillex thing that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How like so like. Joe Rogan's been talking about Jimi Hendrix a lot. So I was like, okay, let me check out Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. And then like listening to his music and then them saying like no guitar's ever been like guitar changed completely because mm. nobody's ever played the guitar like Jimi Hendrix has played it. Right. And I was listening to him like, oh yeah, this is like some revolutionary stuff. Like obviously compared to what they play now, it's like, no, this is like pretty regular. Like I've seen crazier stuff. Yeah. But like the fact that everyone was playing guitar like Countryish, you know, very like mm-hmm. soothing, and then he like used a lot of like effects on it, like wah wahs and stuff, and then like to see that, so that was like the start of the technological revolution as well. You got yeah. to see it there because it's like okay, I'm going to use these effects boards to affect the guitar. Mm-hmm. Something that was very analog became digital. You're right. You know, I'm going to run effects through it. Now it's going to change, and then like then you saw like screamo bands. Yeah. You know, like. How, how like these screamo bands, they would like play their instruments and they would scream and stuff. Like, 
little did most people know Skrillex is actually an emo pop star. <laughs> right. You know, like when he was 14, he was t- touring the world mm. off of From First to Last, which is like an emo band. And then he went to Europe and then he like, and I think something happened with his vocal cords because he was smoking. So he like took okay. some time off. Yeah, no, it was crazy. Because I mean, that's, that yeah, hurt. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you're screaming all the time, it's going to mess up your throat. Mm. So like he, he took some time off. I think he had like a vocal surgery. So then he went to oh. Europe and then that's where he heard of like electronic music. Okay. But then if you listen to like, post hardcore emo stuff and then you listen to Skrillex's music mm. it's like they're the exact same thing he just learned how to scream through his technology than through his voice okay okay they're using the same like tones and like all that stuff mm. and like there's the evolution again you're seeing everything move towards digital you know but it, it's becoming more of like an accepting playing field so it's sort of like the esports right so it's like you only get the top athletes yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's like a very jock mentality, mm. right? Very like separatist, right? right. It's like yeah, you're a jock, yeah. you're you're not. So like all the jocks play sports, right? And then esports is like even jocks can play esports. <laughs> you know, you see like certain people play like um, Snoop Dogg is a big advocate of video games. Uh, Logic is a big advocate of video games. He'll he'll bring like right like we onto yeah. stage and play. Yeah. You know, like um, Fifty Cent was he? I think so, yeah. Okay. All these UFC fighters are advocates of video games. Mm. So it's like, it's a, it's an even playing field. So like, if you look at Skrillex, like Screamo was very not, it was very separatist as well. It's like, oh, you're wearing like girl pants and like dyeing your hair black and like cutting it, you know, weird. But then like he went to Europe and then he's like using electronics to take the same energy mm-hmm. of Screamo and then play it to the masses. And now Skrillex is like working with like Justin Bieber, reggae bands and all that stuff. It's like, because digital is the even playing field. Okay. And that's how that's right. how I'm seeing like digital emerge. Right. You know, it's becoming like the great equalizer. Mhm. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean like uh, like like anyone can get into this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right? you just, exactly. It, Except like, for people in like Asia, that's why they created those like internet cafes and stuff. Like obviously yeah. it costs money to do this, but like no, now you have like people making beats in their basement and then getting like famous. Like uh, uh, who's like, like Drake's beat maker. Yeah. It's just like he was just making beats for Drake on the side, you know. <laughs> right, like, right, right. Like anybody, like um, oh, I forgot. I like follow all these like beat people because they're so fascinating to me. Like they just they're just making beats off mm-hmm. their computer, like the NPC. Yeah. The NPC era, you know, you don't need like a whole setup of like music anymore. You just need your NPC mm. and a laptop, right? You know, where and then you're just like recording. Or like, a good example is like the movie We Are Your Friends, and he would just be recording. You ever hear that Zach Efron? Yeah. So like he would just like record little sound bites on his iPhone, and then he'd put them together and he'd make beats off of them, right? And that's like that's mm. the future, and like you don't need like a drum and a keyboard and like a, we well, need a keyboard. But you don't need like drums, bass, guitar. You just need right. like a keyboard and a laptop. Mm. We, again, great, great unifier. You know, it's like anybody can get into it. And like all these, like, um, I'm trying to figure out his name. A rap music. Okay. A rap music. Oh. Love that guy. He was really inspirational because when you watch him, so like the thing that made A rap music really um, good is that he learned how to play. Whereas people were making beats, like they were like tuning it up and all that, he would do like NPC battles. So mm. it's sort of like rap battles, but you'd come there with your NPC and like your laptop and you'd battle beat for beat on okay. the spot though. Oh. So it's not like you're like recording and then playing it, like which Skrillex does, which is still cool. I mean, like you pre record it and then you just play it at a live show, whatever, whatever. But like he's like yeah. playing the beat on stage, mm. you know? Interesting. And it's like again opening up new markets. Like, who would have thought that was possible? Hmm. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's why I think digital is like the great unifier, and that's why I'm like such a huge advocate for it. Yeah, but it's 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 um, that's true. But it's it's very interesting to like uh, watch the latest, the Hassan Minajman Patriot Act on okay. Netflix, and there's how much people don't have access to internet. 
It totally. So that's yeah, like a, it was like like I'm talking about in America, not, not oh in America, not, oh, in, in inside like America world. itself. Like the cities are covered, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. But like all inland uh, America, a lot of that population does not have like good access to internet or fast. Really? Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Like uh, he mentions in the thing that he remember the ne- uh, Netflix used to be a DVD rental thing. Yeah. They still do it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 No, no, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, I so there's, like, areas that they can't get access to that internet, so... Yeah. Just, like, the blockbuster The Netflix DVD thing is still going on, yeah. 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 Totally, yeah. So, like, I think we have to hit those kinds of points, too. To, it'll, it will grow, like, as internet access becomes more and more prevalent around the world, right? For sure, for sure. So, uh, but that's also growing pretty quick, I would say. But irregardless, it's still, like, it's still evening the playing field Mm -hmm. you know like to me like i don't think you can escape it i think it's just what we're going through i I got sent this um this little uh this like little trolling image Mm -hmm. where this guy was like um he's like uh he wasn't doing out of hate like we've we've worked together in the past like he was just trolling me because like you know we have that kind of relationship Mm -hmm. and like um he sent me like what if Facebook and IG stop working, you wouldn't be an advocate anymore. And I was like, that's funny because he probably used Facebook and IG to get that message out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like the kettle calling, the pot killing the, calling the kettle black kind of thing. It's like you're already, you're, you're using it and right. you're, you're crapping on it, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm always like, no, I love marketing, you know, because mm. I'm using marketing, even though it's evil, but it's like, how do you want to use it? Right. You know, it's just a thing. It's like how people are like against drugs. It's like, no, the drug's not doing anything. It's like your attachment to the drug. Okay. You know, yeah. you yeah. could either do dumb things or really great things. Mm-hmm. You know, people OD on pharmaceuticals all the time. They also OD on like illegal drugs. Right. Is, is it the person or is it the, the actual substance? Right. The substance has no thought. It's us that have the thought. Yeah. So it's sort of like digital. It's like, okay, if you don't want to partake in it, don't partake in it. Mm-hmm. True, you know, but it doesn't take away the fact that this is where it's going. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But what worries me though is people who like completely stave off, like, internet. You know, like, oh, I don't want to like the people that are like super resistant to it. I kind of like. I'm honestly thinking like, where are you going to be in the future? I don't know. Like, you're you're if you're not online, you're not real, kind of thing. Right, right. You are real, like physically real, but it's like. There are certain like job applications require LinkedIn. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. there are certain things that still require social media. So mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. why are you gonna begrudge it? Just be smart about it. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I mean you like, should use all the tools available to you, right? Yeah, that's what that is mainly. Like everything I post, it's like it's I'm cognizant of what I'm posting. All right. But that's like through personal education of what what does this thing do? But I feel like not many like schools don't really educate you properly on how to use it effectively. I mean, generally, schools are behind, right? They True. they they teach you of what is now, not necessarily what is the future, right? True. Or what was, not even what is now. Uh, yeah, 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 in most cases, sure. I mean, like, maybe different in engineering and stuff, but, like, no. Engineering like, doesn't really change a lot. It's just the technology that you use sometimes. That those tools will change. Just Just having been in school and stuff, it's like it's not – like having been through two versions of school and like studying it, yeah, all angles. Like maybe it's just like marketing is very like contemporary, mm. so it's like you can't really, like you can't really pin it down because as soon as you start like saying one thing is one way, yeah, it's like it's already old right. in marketing. Okay, you know, as soon as you already see somebody doing it, it's already been done. You need to always be like ahead of the curve. Yeah, you know, right, right, right. So that's I guess that's why I would say that like schools outdated for educating you on it because you do need it it's it's like you can't not you can't be in this world in the future and not be on digital makes no sense yeah no like what like unless you want to be a cog in the machine Mm. you know like that makes sense too like if you just like want to get like a whatever job and then just like ride it out you know but like let's say you want to start a business you need you need internet you need you need to be online. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. let's say you want you're applying for like pretty high up jobs. You need to be online. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't 
you can't not be online and be in like a CEO position. No. Every CEO has got LinkedIn. Like you just need it because that's how they connect with you. Like other CEOs, it's like a little, it's like, what do they call it? Boys club or whatever. And like, right, right. You, you need to contact these people. Like it's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's just a way to get to know you too. Like there's a lot. Yeah. Of, right. If you share your ideas, your thoughts. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And you need the, like it really does affect you if you do not have those things. It really does affect you. It really does. Yeah. You know, and like, and then all the people that are like, like, all the celebrities that are like, I'm staving off the internet. But it's like easy for you to say you're already a celebrity. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, it's like you've yeah. already made your mark. So it's like you don't even need the internet. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, like, like a uh, good example. I love this dude, but like Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't really use social media. He's not like, I don't use it because it's, it's bad. He's like, I just don't know how to use it. Yeah. So he's like, I'd rather just not do something dumb and just not use it <laughs> than like use it. Right. You I, know? I see. Um, I see. But it's like, yeah, easy for you to say. You sell music, bro. Mm. You have a marketing team that's already pushing that social media for you. You personally don't use internet, sure, but you're still utilizing the internet in a way mm. to market yourself. Yes. You know? Yes. Your interviews that are online that I watch, if those were all deleted, I wouldn't know who you were. If you weren't on Apple Music, I wouldn't know who you were. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the future is digital, and we need to embrace it. Yeah, I think we all should. And like, but just like, understand its place. That's it. You know, like, this is where it's at, and that's fine, you know? Right. It would be just as ridiculous as if, like, like imagine if somebody's like, oh, we're never going to use the printing press again. <laughs> like, what? You? That's how you made books, bro. Yeah. They didn't, yeah, they, these tools didn't go away. Or even back then, they like, reading wasn't a good thing. Remember, like, oh, your head's in the clouds, you're mm. reading too much, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then now it's like, you can't read enough, bro. Now they say it's good to read. So it's like, when did, when did that change? so that's exactly what I mean. It's like flux and flow, bro. It's just know its place. It's like, yeah. okay, if you're saying I'm reading too much, maybe I'm just spending an inordinate amount of time doing this thing, mm. which I am quite guilty of. Anybody who knows me, especially in my closest relationships, I have an obsession with like online space. But yeah. that's for me, it's like, it's because it's like so innovative. Mm-hmm. It's so like, Right. But, you know, again, healthy balance. You need to know when to step away from it and, like, jump back in when it's time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But that's, like, all things. Yeah. It, it is Do all not things. fear the internet. Or one final thing okay. before we go, because I thought this was really fascinating. Um, <laughs> when people complain about um, – I was going to write an article about this, but I'm like, mm. right, I might as well just talk about it on the podcast. It's just easier. But um, – uh, the way people complain about like negativity online. So there's like a thing called retargeting in yeah. marketing. So I'm yeah. just going to blow everyone's mind. It's called retargeting. So what happens is when you engage in an activity, the, the platform that you're using via retargeting, that's utilizing retargeting, doesn't know if you like it or you don't like it. Yeah. It just knows that you're engaging with it. And the more you engage with something, the more likely it is I can sell you an ad. Mm-hmm. Right? This is how marketers think. So it's like, I'm going to send you more hate because that's what you've been engaging with. I assume what you're engaging with is what you want to see. So like if you're dumping negative comments and then you're, you're talking on negative posts and you're, you're like double tapping negativity, of course you're going to see more of that because I'm retargeting that back at you. But like, I've never seen negativity online personally. Like I see it. Sure. But I just don't scroll past it because I'm like, ah, it's not, it's not like something I'm into, so I'm just gonna right. keep scrolling. So like my entire feed is just positivity, things of inspiration, and I'm like, yeah, just like unfollow negative people or just don't engage, and then it'll, you'll just be retargeted positivity. Mm-hmm. Like if you know how, again, that's a part of the education. If you know how it works, then maybe you can like separate yourself from it. Right. You know. Yeah. Like literally, I I just like watch like Jerry episodes and like double tap photography. And like find inspiring people online, and mm-hmm. that's all I'm dealing with digitally. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all I see. Right. Because I'm not retargeted negativity. So just stop looking at it, and it'll go away, <laughs> and it'll start retargeting you more positive things. But that's again, online education. Yeah. Right. It's like, how does it work? What's my role in it? And how do I move forward? Also, you know, internet is also filled with trolls that just want to try to make people but totally but but even but even trolls it's like i don't 
a, you don't have to don't engage. engage with trolls. You don't have to engage. Just and then because engage. I don't engage with trolls, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I'm not in it. And they say, like, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. Mm. It was like in that movie Nightcrawler. That's yeah. a real true thing in, in public relations. Like, yeah. you you learn that about news media. Like, if it bleeds, it does lead. Um, mm-hmm. What I find really cool is, like, that I work for a very positive organization now. Yeah. So, like, I can say this stuff, and, like, it's not, like, a negative thing because it's, like, they believe in the same things I believe in, which right. is, like, just spreading positivity, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's, like, again, it's, like, where do you choose to work? You know, like, do you choose to work in a negative environment or a positive environment? Anyways, so, like, if it bleeds, it leads. So it's, like, yeah, they know how to game the system. The more negativity I spit out there, the more people... If I say, like, uh, if if somebody's scrolling and they're, like, oh, what a nice Mm -hmm. day it is, right? People are, like, oh, it is a nice day. But then, like, you write, like, oh, I hate this race of people. Then somebody's, like, dude, why do you hate this race of people? Mm -hmm. Dude, you shouldn't hate these race of people. Like, you know what I mean? Then you're commenting on it, and that is just feeding the algorithm of retargeting and then they're like oh you must like this because you're commenting on it so i'm going to send you more hate online but it's like if you were like oh it's a nice day out double tap yeah it is a nice day bro (laughs) then it's like okay you're only going to get nice day posts right you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. educate and conquer yeah or it's like like me you know i just like to to banter in both yeah but see like you know what you're actively engaging in yeah i know most people don't they just don't understand how it works but it's like this is that's true digital education i find it fun what the trolling (laughs) i don't actually comment on anything i just like to see these like when i see these things happen i just laugh totally yeah but you like you don't get caught these are these are that's true these are entertainment values for me right exactly whereas like a lot of people self-identify with it yeah that's true but again that's like that's also like a social narrative that's like burnt into people's brains Mm -hmm. of like no, not burning your priest. It's like our genetics of like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. being like a good example of what um, a more tangible example of this of like burging, like like with the Raptors winning and stuff. Mm. So like one of the experiments that they did in psychology, social psychology is they got one person to look up at the building and they waited to see how long other people would start looking up. Oh, yeah. yeah and then quickly that. people started looking up. They're like, what's what is going on? Yeah. What's going on over there? But that's just how we're hardwired as a collective yeah, species. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, no wonder sports are so important. You know, like, mm-hmm. no wonder why we get into these in group, out group mentalities because it's hardwired in us. Oh, if yeah. one person's looking at something, but it, it's not like a negative thing. It was born no, 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 out no. of like survival. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if There's one person's reason. looking at something, you're like, oh, maybe that thing might kill me. Mm. I need to look at it, you know? Yeah, right. But, you know, I mean, yeah, it was. They were used for certain things in the wild, I guess. Whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. And now, sometimes it's not necessarily like it can be detrimental. And, mm-hmm. and, and for sure, yeah. Right. Well, if you don't know what it is, if you don't well, know what it is, that's Carl, true. Carl Jung says that like we need to go from like the unconscious, which is like we don't know what's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Like you're a baby, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you hit like age of like four or something, and then you start becoming conscious. You're like, oh, my decisions matter. Yeah. You know? Mm. And then most people just stop there. And then that's the rest of their lives. They're just like, oh, my decisions matter. And like, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm this thing. I'm, you know, Mm -hmm. me, 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 me. That's being conscious. But then to be super conscious is to see beyond yourself. And then you're like, oh, there's a world outside of who I am. And Mm -hmm. other people's decisions matter too. Right. You know? And it's like, that's sort of how you have to educate yourself with everything. It's like, okay, what's going on in this world? Right. Yeah. And then it, when you become super educated, just like how I said, like digital educate, like, so you're going to look at the digital world and you're going to be like, dude, there's so many trolls online. Dude, I don't know. I don't want to be a part of the online yeah. space, all that stuff. Mm. That's you being conscious. Yeah, you are conscious of it. You're aware. But to be super conscious is like, what's really going on here? And then make your decision. Right. It's like, okay, I understand that me not being digital, <laughs> I'm probably not going to get a job that's super high up because a lot of people need digital. Mm-hmm. It's just the way the world works. You know, it's like, yeah. Like, it's but, funny now yeah. with, like, you need good guides, right? So, like, I was never a fan of, like, school. Hated it, right? My parents were just like, no, you're going to school. You're going to finish this. You're going to thank me later. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm, like, actually thanking them because I'm like, oh, this education really is the key. Right. You, I have a good job because of education. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. And, like, I have other opportunities because of education. But, like, if we don't have good guides, if we don't – if we 
we aren't educated properly, mm-hmm. then we're just stuck in a, the wrong feedback loop. That's right. that's becoming super conscious. Yeah, you know, you're like, oh, this is really how it works. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, education is huge. I think you sh- should have some at least. But some people, but like we were saying in the last podcast, like the truth is salty. Mm-hmm. So you, you you have to come to education like the truth. It's like this is what it is. How are we going to move forward? Not like this is what it is. It sucks. Or it's great. You know, yeah. just like unbiased objective observance and just being like, okay, these are the rules of the game. It's like, I can't fly. Mm. I can't levitate. So it's like, why am I going to continuously wish I can levitate? Right. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I can't fly. All right, I'm going to walk there then. Or I'm going to build a car. It doesn't mean that you stop trying to achieve that end goal. Mm-hmm. It's just like, how do we get there? Yeah. You know, okay, so I need digital. Okay. How much do I need digital? You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like that's that's the game of life. That's the balancing act. That's like flowing with life rather than resisting it. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, that's true. Or else you get these freaking pockets of like, when I went to uh, Montana and they didn't know where Canada was. You're like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And they literally thought like the person I was with was trolling them. Like, oh, we actually live in igloos. And like, oh my God, what's that like? And I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> do yeah. you really think I'm in an igloo? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I don't know why. <laughs> not, not, not harping on Montana. I'm just saying, like that's yeah, what yeah, I encountered. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I encountered. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You know, yeah, there are people like that. But I mean, that's that. That's where the internet needs to come in. And yeah, the great unifier. Yeah. They say that like we're entering into the age of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's what all the spiritualists say. Like. That's another thing. That's why I delve so deep into like spiritualism. I'm like, all right, you guys say that you have the answer to the life. Let me delve down this path and see what it is that you guys are talking about. Mm-hmm. And then I realized like, oh, most of you are just selling things. Like if I, if I have the, sp- the secret to life, I'm going to charge you an arm and leg for me to tell you. And then just to find out, you might not actually have the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot where I was going with that one. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. you just need to educate wisely and proceed with caution. Mm-hmm. Say la vie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you got anything else? No. All right. Till next time. Esports, here we come. Oh, yeah. That's going to be an exciting future. We, we should definitely go to an esports uh, match when they come to camp. I would just love to see it. It would be like a UFC event. It's like, is it really st- like awesome or is it just like. It's the same sort of stuff. I know that's But you're watching suck, them sit bro. on uh, the computers, play the game, and it'd be interesting though. It's interesting. I, I mean, it's it's always better on the TV, or like on the oh, screen to yeah, watch, yeah, right? Then, yeah. like that's just how I feel. I'm more rather be more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I agree. But I, it's like you just gotta see it. Yeah. Because like, again, the truth is salty, so we're gonna like take big bites of it and die with high blood pressure. Okay. That's why we go to the events, I'm saying. Yeah, I know that. I know what you got. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So until next time. Cool. Take it easy. Peace. Subscribe. Pay. Buy us stuff. Bye. Oh, okay. All right. Bye.